Hi, Hannah. This is Turtle Funeral. Hi, Amanda, with Amanda attending. Yeah, yes, I'm in attendance of Ortego's funeral. Yeah, yes, I am. Yeah, yes, I am. I've almost had you for four years, haven't I, baby? I've had you almost four years. Four years as my little pet. Ain't that right? Yeah, yes, I'm in attendance at Ortego's funeral and this turtle funeral that I've never known before. The turtle Maria, uh, named her Maria. I think it's a female. Ortego had been dead for like, since the 18th. So it's been like, I don't know, 11, 12 days and he's not even stinking. But people were like, he, he's still gonna give off diseases and crap. Yeah, he's not, he wasn't even stinking after like 12 days. So people were like, well, he's going to stink. So that's why I went ahead and put him in the freezer. But he wasn't even stinking at all. I just kept moving him, moving him around with me, letting him sleep by my bed and stuff. But he died on the 18th. And I don't know why he, turtle, tur, turtles don't smell when they die, apparently. It's really weird, but he doesn't. He didn't smell at all. Did you, my little Ortego? But yeah, he's been in the freezer. But, um. But yeah, here's Amanda in attendance of Ortego's funeral. And dear Bobby, and dear Hannah, and dear Cesar. I gotta take Cesar to the vet tomorrow because I think he has diabetes. But hopefully I can control it with food. Ain't that right, Amanda? But this turtle shell is like totally extinct. A guy gave it to me. A guy gave it to my sister to give to me a couple years ago. And um, yeah, it's, it didn't dawn on me at the time that, oh, this turtle is extinct. That didn't dawn on me. I just thought, wow, this must be one of those rare turtles that every state has. You know, like every state has a rare turtle. But um, this isn't no rare turtle. Well, yeah, it is rare, but it's freaking extinct. There's no turtles like this that exist anymore. You know? There's no turtles like this. This thing is huge, too. It's a land turtle. But there's no turtles that exist like that. I had to patch it up. My sister broke some of the pieces. Hey, Amanda. But, um, but yeah, I mean, this thing is freaking extinct. So I think this turtle lived to be 200 years old, probably older. You can tell it has a really old shell. And, um, hey, Amanda. And, um, um, and it could be like from the 1500s or 1600s or 1700s or 1200s, who knows? But it's extinct and I looked up, you know, Missouri extinct turtles and of course nothing came up. So maybe this thing is like a thousand years old. And it could have lived to be 200 years old and then maybe it had been sitting in the woods for, you know, 800 years. Ain't that right, Bobby, but it's a pretty little thing. Dang. You're not going to find a turtle like that anywhere because this thing is freaking extinct. Isn't it, baby doll, Amanda? But I don't know why that didn't dawn on me until a few days ago. I'm like, wow, okay, this thing is freaking extinct, man. It's not a rare turtle, turtle of Missouri. It's actually extinct. You know? Um, yeah, because I read on the internet, you know, all states probably have some rare species and those, you know, you can't, like, try to have us pets or whatever. But anyway, it's a beautiful little turtle and I think it's female because it's so big. It's a land turtle. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. I patched the little feller up. I shouldn't have left it outside for two years because I think it made it a little more brittle. But at the time I wasn't exactly thinking like, wow, this is an extinct turtle shell. I wasn't thinking that at the time. Okay. Come on, Amanda, now you, you be still. Come on, we gotta attend little Ortego's funeral, and you be still. But yeah, it's a really sad story. My little Ortego died on the 18th. And like I say, I've, I, I only put him in the freezer last night. He had been out and about, you know, all this time, and he never did even stink. After 12 days, he didn't stink. But people at the bookstore, they're like, well, he can still maybe give the cats diseases and crap. But I don't know if that's true. You know, he's not stinking or anything. So, I don't know. It'd be on the safe side since he had already been out 
in the open for 12 days after he died. I thought, well, maybe I better put him in the freezer. So I put, he's been in the freezer. Um, I put him in two bags. But yeah, um, it's a really sad story. But um, I'm going to bury him, but not quite yet. I want to wait and make sure my other turtles come out of hibernation and stuff. And then I'll bury little Ortego, but it's really, really sad because he was my favorite turtle. And, um, so anyway, I brought him in to not hibernate. I brought him in for the winter because I figured he would just run around the house just like the other three toad box turtles. Well, he decided to, I mean, that's why I brought him in to not hibernate. Well, he, I'm sorry, baby. Well, he decided to, to hibernate. Manda, Manda. Uh, my toad doesn't hibernate, but in the wild they do. They really do hibernate. The toads do too, but she doesn't because she's indoors. But little Ortego, he's a different breed, man. He's always been different. And these turtles, I think, are a little more temperamental. Anyway, I could tell by observing them. And um, so basically, he he went ahead and hibernated. And I had the temperature in my house all winter. I had 60. I had it like about 63 degrees, anywhere between 61 to 63 degrees and um so anyway it wasn't long I mean I can't remember how long I mean I, I it wasn't long after I brought him in boom he started to hibernate and so did Scooter my red ear slider he's doing fine though but next year I'm probably going to make him hibernate outside because I just want to make sure I, but I'm, I'm going to have to do re research on that first. I need to make sure he can hibernate on land. Oh, my God, Amanda. Are you kidding me? Baby. You know, but I'm pretty sure he probably can. Uh, but my red... I'm sorry, baby. My redder slider is doing fine. Like I say, little Amanda, she's almost four... I mean, I mean, I've had her almost four years, but she's probably like... 17 years old or 18 years old. That's just a wild guess. So, Ortego... Um, I really thought he was always a young turtle, you know, just because the way he acted. I thought he was young, you know, when somebody, well, when the aliens placed him outside my door at work. And I, I didn't even have the little feller two freaking years. Almost, not quite, but I just, if I had to say which, which one of my turtles was going to die, I would say it probably would have been Charlie. Because I can tell Charlie is an old turtle. Because his shell is very smooth. And, um... Never in my life did I think little Ortego was going to kick the bucket. But, um, all I know is, I mean, I did wake, I, I did pick him up one time a couple months ago, and he opened his eyes, like, oh, like he, like he opened his eyes, and then boom, he fell back to sleep. <clears throat> and so, yeah, I mean, I wish I would have checked on him, like, more now, you know, but, um, I didn't want to bug him too much. I mean, I mean, I would kind of touch him, and he would move or whatever. But I wish I would have, like, really checked on him more now. But um, he was acting like he was coming out of hibernation a week. You know, a couple times he came out of hibernation and started crawling around. Like, he did that, like, three times, you know, in a week, just uh, a week before he died. And the day before he died, he came out from under the bed. And I thought he was trying to wake up again from hibernation. And the vest said he probably came out to die. And apparently that's what he did because when I put him back under the bed or whatever or near the bed, when I checked on him on Monday, which I happened to be off on February 18th, he died. But I took him to the vet to make sure he was dead because I figured he was and he was. But, um, well, Amanda, oh my God. Are you kidding me? I guess you guys do like to climb. I heard that before, but I've never really seen you climb, baby doll. Oh my god! This is our little Ortego funeral. Ortego, I can't live without you, baby. I'm gonna have to buy another one on the internet just like you. I'm gonna just have to buy one. Or hopefully somebody will find me a Mel or Nate Box Turtle because it's gonna be too depressing this spring and summer. I can't live without you, my little baby doll. So, um, there is a place on the internet where you can buy them. It's supposed to be illegal, 
but there is a place that sells male or female or a box turtles adult ones but i just i don't know if you would have to treat them any differently since they were born and raised in captivity and like who knows they could be getting some shit from the wild too that reptile uh place on the internet you know they seem you can tell they they're kind of operating on the down low but um amanda but uh I've been bawling over this turtle for like 11 days and um so anyway um at first I figured I probably did kill him by bringing him inside and then he tried to hibernate in an un unnatural environment I really thought I maybe killed him but the more I think about it and the more I um I asked my spirit guide like how old he was she said he was 34 years old and uh, it's just bizarre because all this time I thought he was a young turtle you know what I'm saying because I don't have any experience in aging turtles and crap and you know just the way he acted you know turtles are always going to act you know young no matter if they're 150 or five years old Amanda oh my god so anyway and, and the vet even said that he looked really old and you can tell there's, there's a bunch of signs you can tell, like at the bottom of his shell, like a big indention and stuff in his shell. That indicates age, the bottom of his shell, uh, you know, the, the strong indention and stuff, you know. Um, so anyway, apparently he really is an old turtle, ornate box turtles. I already knew they didn't live as long as three-toed box turtles because I already did my research. And ornate box turtles only live like 20 to 37 years. And like I say, if he really is 34, I don't think my spirit guide is lying. Because I keep asking her over and over again, are you sure I didn't kill him? By, um, like bringing him indoors. And... Well, basically, um, uh, you know, he obviously, he wasn't healthy enough to hibernate. And of course, um, his little body told him to hibernate. So basically, um, the vet said, you know, even, you know, even if I would have left him outside in the winter, you know, it got really cold this winter too, you know, he wouldn't have survived. If that theory is true, which I do believe that theory is probably true. I think he is an old turtle, like my spirit guide said. And like the vet said. And um, he, he wasn't healthy enough. He was probably underweight because um, the, the second season I had him, which was, you know, last year um, instead of the year before, he ate much better in 2016 than he did in 2017. And um, I did notice that. And another thing I noticed was that, you know, when it would be perfectly good days, like sunny, warm and all that, perfectly good temperatures, all the other turtles would be running around and he would still be in the ground for two to three days, you know? And that could maybe indicate that, you know, that, you know, him not being as active and stuff as the other turtles could have indicated that maybe, you know, he just wasn't healthy. Uh, um, he wasn't healthy or he was getting old, you know? And, um, the lady on the internet, she knows a lot about turtles and stuff. She said that turtles, you know, reptiles and stuff, they're really well known to hide their sickness. You know, they're really good about hiding their sickness, you know. But, you know, I mean, and every time I would feed him, you know, he didn't eat any more than like, one time I think I got him to eat like eight or nine super worms. But all the other times I would try to feed him, he would just eat like four or five, you know, and that's it. And so the little feller, um, yeah, it gets real complicated when turtles hibernate because if they're not healthy, they may die under hibernation. If they're too old or if they're just not healthy or if they're underweight, you know, they could die. And, um, but apparently, like I say, the more I think about it and the more 
my spirit guide keeps saying that he was 34 years old and that his heart just wasn't, you know, strong enough because, like, you know, he just wasn't healthy, healthy enough and him being old and everything. I mean, he made it. I don't understand. He made it, you know, the whole, almost all of winter, though. He made it almost all of winter. So why did he just, boom, die after five months of hibernation, you know? But supposedly, their heart only beats once every 10 minutes when they're hibernating and you know I, I I think his heart just gave out under hibernation but how did you last so long baby doll why did you last so long you know and then just die on Feb February 18th it's almost spring baby doll it's almost spring honey yes it is sweetie it's almost spring and I But I'm going to have to get another one because I can't live without him. Little guy. And, you know, I could have maybe taken him to the vet, you know, and maybe he would have said uh, he's underweight, you know. But that doesn't mean he still would have tried to hibernate because even if I had 80 degrees in here, he still would have tried to hibernate. I mean, I had it like 61 to 63. And that really should not be hibernation, hibernating temperatures for most turtles. But his little body told him to hibernate, which I'm not surprised because... I always knew he was a different turtle. He was a different breed. He's different than all the other turtles. When I bring the three-toed box turtles in, they don't sit there and try to hibernate when I bring them indoors. They stay awake and everything. And eventually, at the end of December or middle of December, they get their appetite back. But yeah, the more I think about it, I really do think I didn't kill him by bringing him indoors. And, you know, because sometimes that can kill them. Uh, Bev said that on the internet. She said... I mean, on YouTube, um, she oh, she owns a turtle. You know, she said that sometimes a turtle, she said that 63 degrees is not hibernating temperatures. And she said that they'll sit there and act like they're hibernating, but they're not. They're just like, it's too cold for them to like move and everything, but it's too warm for them to hibernate. So she said they'll just starve to death and dehydrate. But I know that's not true in his case. I know that is not true because he did not act like he was hibernating. He was hibernating. He wasn't just acting like he was. You know, he wasn't just a sluggish turtle. He was hibernating. You know what I'm saying? And the vet said, I told, I asked the vet, was I supposed to mist him and spray him down and get him wet, you know, occasionally throughout since he was hibernating, you know, indoors? And, um, and I told him the temperature in my house, you know, 61 to 63 degrees. And he's like, no. He said, he said um, he's already been acclimated to all of that. That shouldn't have been a problem. That he already been acclimated to dry conditions and and uh, to 60 degrees or whatever. And um, But like I said, I know there is some truth, though, in what Bev is saying. And also what makes me feel so much better is that I got on the Internet, I mean, on YouTube, and this one guy, he said that he hibernated his two ornate box turtles at 60 degrees. So it doesn't necessarily, when you bring them indoors, you know, you don't necessarily have to have it at 45 degrees, apparently. He said he hibernated his Orde box turtles at um, 60 degrees. He said it got a little colder at nighttime, but, and they did fine. So the more I think about it, the more I think I really did not kill this turtle by bringing him in to hibernate, you know, to bringing him in an unnatural habitat. But I know what Bev is saying, there's got to be some truth in that. Some turtles probably will die, you know, but in Ortego's case, I know he truly was hibernating. He shut his body down and everything, and I think he just wasn't healthy enough to hibernate. So his little heart stopped. And like the fact that he was old, I know he really is old now. But there for a while, I just figured my spirit guide was just telling me what I want to hear and shit. But after doing research and stuff, and um, thinking about how he acted and stuff all summer, like how he didn't eat as much. I mean, he acted normal, you know, but he didn't eat as much. And the more I think about it, the more I think I really didn't kill him by bringing him in doors. You know what I'm saying? But if he would have died outdoors, I would have thought, oh my God, I knew I should have brought him indoors. He froze to death. That's what I would have thought. But turtles do not freeze to death. Then I would have taken, taken him to the vet and he would have said, okay, he probably died because he just wasn't healthy enough. You know, turtles do not freeze to death. But that's what I would have thought at first. 
But little Ortega, you're gonna be missed, baby. And I'm gonna get me another one because I can't live without you, honey. And it's gotta be just like you, Mel and uh, Ornay Box Turtle.